Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about the Unigine game engine. Now this one is uh, kind of more recently relevant to the world of game development because they've brought in new and improved licensing, made it more accessible to people including a free version for those making less than $100,000 a year. But Unigine has been around for a number of years. You probably actually know them from their benchmarks more than anything. Uh, Unigine Heaven, for example. But this is uh, one of their sample projects running in the Unigine editor. And this uh, game engine has a number of strengths going for it. First off, you can create really large uh, worlds with it. Nice uh, fidelity graphics. You've got a number of systems built in. You have the option of programming in a number of languages, including C Sharp, where we've got new version support in this release as well as C++ and their own proprietary scripting language. We've also got a number of improvements and those improvements are really going to showcase some of the graphic fidelity of this game engine. So we're going to look at those and then what we'll do is jump over, take a look at the release notes, give you an idea of what's what. So this here is Unigine. Uh, it, it's, it's a pleasant thing to work with. It's got a slightly different approach to uh, how you may do things in Unreal or Unity, but it is definitely their peer with the same level of functionality you come to expect from a modern game engine. So what we've got new going on here is let's go back here. I already created a brand new world, a whole new world. We'll open that one up. And here we've got an empty world, nothing too special going on here. This is what a standard stock level would look like. Now I'm gonna showcase two of the new features here. The first one is the clouds. Gonna go up here, create, we we'll go to sky, and you're going to notice under cloud layer, we now have a number of new cloud types. I'm not going to try and say most of these. Is it Colum Columnimbus? I don't know. Uh, we have a number of different cloud types you could create, and we'll go ahead and create one of them right now. And you're going to get an idea of the kind of functionality we've got going on. All right, so there we've got a new kind of cloud layer. That one is pretty dense. We'll go ahead and we can go ahead and delete that, and I'll showcase another option we've got. So I'm gonna go ahead once again, create sky cloud layer, and we'll do a number one instead. And there you can see. So you got a number of different cloud options. You also can create multiple clouds if that is so your joy. So come here, create another cloud, and we'll make an alto whatever cloud. Like I said, I'm not even gonna try and say these ones. Uh, all right, come on, come on. You can do it, little buddy. So we've got these new, more accurate, more configurable cloud systems in place. So there you see the secondary cloud layer. So you can layer your cloud layers together. Uh, with the second one selected, we're gonna go ahead and play around with some of the settings for it. So with that done, we're gonna go here into uh, parameters. We'll open up the cloud layer. We'll select it right here. And here you see you have a number of different options. But if you wanna actually go ahead and edit any of these things, you need to create a new child material, which we will do. And now you can see you have a ton of control over how these clouds are, are done, shaded, uh, how they work, uh, how much wind there is. Uh, we can control uh, the amount of detail on them, the amount of noise here. So let's jack the noise up. And coverage size, a whole lot more, a whole lot less. So you can see you've got a ton of control over these cloud systems. It's true for both of them, each one. Same case, you wanna control them. All you do is create a child material and then you have uh, control over all kinds of, so this is the cloud above us, all kinds of settings for those clouds. So you can create an infinite variety of clouds going on here. So we got above us covered. Well, what about below us? Well, we can also handle that now too with more settings here. So we've got, uh, let's come here, we're gonna to go to water and I'm going to create a global water. So this is basically an ocean that covers the world. You would generally create something like this and then pull your terrain over top of it. So there we now have water in our world. Let's, let's actually get above it. There you can see our water. So we got our water selected here and we can go ahead and control parameters for it. Number of different options. The same deal though, you gotta create a material for it, but you've got all kinds of control over how these waves are going. So wave heights. Uh, wave height number two. So we're having some very intense waves going on, very foamy waves here. So you've got a lot of control over how your um, your waves are handled. You've even got control down yet to the uh, uh, programming level of how waves are done. So you've got improvements to the sky, the cloud stuff, and to the water as well, which by the way, this water does work underwater as well. You'll notice you're getting light caustics coming through it. So you get nice above and below ground water. 
the low ground. Okay, you know what I mean. So anyways, this does give you kind of an illustration of the graphical fidelity of this engine. It is an impressive engine with an impressive set, impressive set of features in it. And those features do improve at a pretty steady rate. So on that topic, let's go over and take a quick look at the release notes. I'm going to do the top level release notes. There is another set out there. So we've got a full set of clouds here. So the volumetric multi-cloud layer is designed specifically for enterprise flight simulators and meets the strict requirement. So if you're actually flying through the clouds, this is an engine that's appropriate for them. There are 10 types of clouds. Again, I'm not even going to try and say any of them other than, okay, I can say Stratus and I can say Stratocumulus. And I think that's about where I'm going to end there. So there's a number of pre-configured cloud sets out of the box. In addition to that, they've improved cloud formation with fine control over parameters and sorting between rendering objects. Uh, cloud layers can now be limited to a certain area and improved reduction of tiling makes clouds look natural regardless of their density. So you can see the clouds here, we are above them. So if you are doing a flight simulator style game and you need to actually go through your clouds, you are delighted here. Now, next up, unfortunately, this one I cannot showcase to you uh, because it is not available in the community release. The community version is that version for people making $100,000 or less. This is only in their more paid versions. And it's a tool called Sandworm, which basically will generate a height map from geodata. So you can bring in uh, uh, elevation in information, or you can use something like OpenStreetMaps or your municipal databases. Bring in their uh, their details and actually recreate real world height maps as a result of them. Uh, the water system we saw very briefly there also got an update. A new implementation of waves is now available, offering you precise control of wave spectrums. Unique characteristics of each wave system can be set independently through spectral parameters, wave direction, and speed, and the shape factor of waves. Uh, all of this data is now available on the CPU side. You can create multiple waves and wave groups uh, with convenient access to every parameter uh, and an ability to control them via an API at runtime. So if you wanted to have you know, dynamic weather systems with crashing waves and so on, you can do so. Another nice new thing about this release is support for .NET 5, which also means C Sharp 9 support. That brings you better performance, garbage collection improvements, C Sharp 9 support with improved performance and native interop and more, uh, container size optimizations and numerous bug fixes. So if you are on the C Sharp side of things, C Sharp 9 is about as new as they get and it is supported. We also have a new tool for debugging lighting, uh, the light meter, it's a visual debugging tool to simplify lighting adjustments. Uh, we've got planner reflection probe support. So working with planner reflections have become more convenient with a new light planner probe. You're no longer bound to a certain mesh surface or material as its separate object for grabbing and projecting reflections onto fat surface, fat, flat surfaces, mirrors, water surface, etc. A single probe can be used for multiple surfaces it covers. Uh, and we've got a number of other smaller changes, asset package system, better uh, subsurface ambient occlusion and bent normals, improved refraction sorter, safety, uh, safer execution sequence, improved physics update logic per effect quality presets, voxel probe visualizer, improved 2D curve support, improved CIGI callbacks in the image generator system and a vegetation add-on support now has tropical trees in it as well. Uh, if you want, there are the full release notes. We covered the top level stuff and there's kind of a bit more detail on everything we just covered. But then if we kind of keep going and notice there's a lot of smaller releases, code level releases, improvements and fixes in this one as well. Uh, it's an impressive release on the whole. Those new wave and cloud functionality is definitely uh, nice stuff. I would love to be able to check out that sandworm stuff, but sadly uh, I can't. Also looks like you could do some neat stuff with your clouds in terms of making pirate ships and skulls uh, out of them and so on. So if you are interested, I will link the full release notes as well as the summarized release notes in the link article down below. In terms of the versions that are available, uh, so you're gonna have to get, I think to engineering or SIM in order to get access to Sandworm. Also some of the other functionality is support for 64-bit uh, precision worlds, as opposed to, I believe, 32 only here. Otherwise, they are mostly the same version. A lot of the engineering stuff is, is literally stuff that you won't need for the most part. The only thing I've really seen that's over here that I'd like to see over here is the 64-bit precision and the new Sandworm tool. But truth of the matter is, not many games are going to be making... Um, height maps out of real world geo data and those that are are probably more in this category as well so if you want to check out the free version uh you can use it to make commercial projects uh, you just had to have made less than 100k last year oh wait non-commercial pro i thought you could make up to 100k uh so i guess there you have to go up to if your funding is more than 100k okay i need to figure that one out i, I don't think i didn't think that was the thing 
I didn't mean to actually search for it, but uh, I'll need to look into that and clarify. But meantime, if you do have some questions or comments or anything about them, uh, do be sure to check out their Discord server. Uh, exciting invite screen here up on screen. I will have their Discord server linked in the linked article down below. Let me get back to you on that uh, commercial thing. Again, I thought you could make up to 100K uh, with it. I didn't think it was non-commercial only. So that may have changed on me or may have just been wrong all along. I'm going to have to look into that. But anyways, that is uh, Unigine uh, 2.14. Uh, I got to say, bang for the buck graphic-wise, they they compete. They're, they're right on the same page as Unity and Unreal Engine. The workflows are quite a bit different. So if for some reason Unity, Unreal, Godot, whatever doesn't speak to you, Unigine is definitely one to check out. I, I find it pleasant to work with and it's improving at a pretty rapid clip. So anyways, that is Unigine 2.14. Uh, what do you think? Have you tried it out? Are you going to try it out? Let me know those things in the comments down below. And if you're all into the world of game development and you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe and like button and I'll keep you up to date on the world of game development as it happens. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.